It's time to take a ride on the Steelers Afternoon Drive with our co-hosts, Alan Saunders and Zachary Smith. Welcome back to another episode of Steelers Afternoon Drive. I'm Zachary Smith. That is Alan Saunders. Hope everybody's having a great 4th of July. Uh, That being said, on these holiday episodes, we like to do a little something different typically. If you guys remember the Thanksgiving episode, we like to do like superlative type stuff. So Alan had the great idea of building our cookout rosters, if you will. We're going to go back and forth having a fantasy draft, if you will, uh, with different categories. We'll pick a Steelers player for but you can't use that player twice. If Alan picks that player, I cannot and vice versa. So it's going to be a lot of fun, Alan. Should be fun. It should be fun. I'm not sure this was a great. Well, let's see if this was a great idea afterwards. I'm not, I'm not willing to call this a great <laughs> idea yet. Just, yeah. I was, was telling him that, that like, I was telling Alan that a lot of thought went into my picks and I have an ideal player that I have for each one. If Alan snipes me on these, where I will pivot to, uh, could be very interesting in live time. Um, and so I have done do absolutely this. no research other than the idea okay. myself. So I'm just fully shooting from the hip here. Great. Love to hear it. Uh, we also have to do a virtual coin toss via Siri on my phone, which I could have done beforehand, but I thought that would also be fun to just have take place right on here as well. Uh, Alan, I will let you call it. All right, Siri, you ready? Flip a coin. Go ahead. Tails never fails. It's heads this time. Damn. <laughs> All right, so I got the first pick. Uh, just to give you guys a little bit of a rundown of the categories we are going to do. Of course, we need somebody to man the grill. Uh, we need somebody responsible for the fireworks. Someone to bring slash make drinks. Someone that you want to bring their famous dish that they always make. Someone you invite, but you know won't show up. Someone you can only trust to bring the napkins and ice. Someone that will still be there when you wake up on the 5th of July. Someone that shows up fashionably late. And someone that dominates the yard games slash beer pong flip cup. All the games that will be played on the 4th of July. All right. So I have first choice here for the man that is on the grill. And I will tell you what. If you follow this person on social media, which by the way, not a very large social media following, especially on his Twitter account. So go follow him. But I'm going with Braden Fajoko here. Recently got into the smoking of the meats, and I just have to assume that that is going to transfer over on the grill as well. I know in past years, you know, the grilling and chilling was like a whole thing with Zach Gentry. I know Pat's still on the team. I'll bring up Pat later. I don't trust him to do much. Um, you know, Stefan Tuitt was was well known on the grill as well. Uh, they always talked about that with him having the defensive lineman or offensive lineman over. But Braden Fajoko, maybe this is recency bias because of what I, the work that I've been seen him doing lately with his smoker. He's going to be my man on the grill. I think it's a pretty solid pick. I do think that it's quite ironic that Pat Fryermuth has a show named Grilling and Chilling, and neither of us are going to pick Pat for this. <laughs> also. They never actually grilled anything on the show. So, like, if he's upset about that, I'm just going to blame that particular production choice here um, because maybe, uh, you know, maybe it would be a little bit different. Um, I feel like the person on the grill needs to be someone that's organized, like, tactically. Like, you got to – when you're cooking, when you're grilling for a big group, you got to have, like, Okay, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta put the burgers on at this time. You don't, nobody wants an overcooked burger. You know, the hot dogs. You gotta get it right. You gotta have people's orders and preferences down. I need an organizer, and so uh, I think, and, and I think you need a veteran. I think Braden Fajoko is a very good pick. I'm going Cam Hayward on the grill. I want Big Head Ooh, okay. just, just, just running things from. I, he, also, I think Cam Hayward would wear like a self-deprecating apron. You know, like like a little kiss the cook yeah. or something like that. You know, I think that's that's his style. Um, I, I also think it would be fairly entertaining too uh, to have both of us pick big guys. I think you got to have a big guy, you know, running the yeah, grill. Like I you mean, can't never trust a skinny cook. Never trust a skinny cook. That's the that's, the one that I might if I if you had to if you were like, hey, you can pick somebody a cook, but they got to be like barely above two hundred. 
Nick Herbig is maybe the one skinny guy that I would throw in there just because of the culture he comes from. His brother is a bigger guy. Uh, I just think there's a lot. Nate there. Herbig, Nate Herbig would have been a solid choice here as well. I think. Yeah, and I, and he Nate, might Nate, come up for me Nate, later. Nate Nate Herbig would would have definitely been a good choice. Okay, I, I, let me ask you this to clarify. So now that you've taken Cam Hayward for this category, he can't be picked even by. He's me off the board. Later. He's okay. off the board. Yeah. All, All right. right. I just wanted to make sure that I had that correct. Um. I'll have to change one of my picks coming up then. Uh, so you got first pick here for the uh, the fireworks then. You know, the fireworks is is to me like who is the like I, I don't know. It depends on what kind of party you want to have because like sometimes the most fun can be watching the person struggle with the fireworks, but like it, it and it also <laughs> like adds that little bit of danger. To like the proceedings where you're like, do we trust this person with our lives? Like, like, and, and how much yeah. do we trust that they're not going to blow it all up? Um, and I think, in my experience, okay, there are two types of pyros. Okay, there are the pyros that everyone knows are pyros that like run around and light things on fire all the time, and those are the mm -hmm. ones where you're like, no, 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 not at the Fourth of July party. There's kids here, man. Like, aunties are in chairs. You're going to burn grandma. You can't. You need the guy that does not come out as a pyro but once a year. And then you're like, oh, I didn't know he had that in him. And 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 so for me, the guy I want blowing things up is TJ Watt. I think TJ Watt, like, has that, like, calm veneer. He's mm -hmm. organized. He's responsible. But also, I have a feeling if you let that man, like, like – TJ Watt could be in charge of controlled demolitions. Like, you just let him let him blow things. I get, I, I bet he'd go nuts. I, I think that's my pick for for the fireworks man. Okay, I love that pick. He actually was not one of the three that I was considering for this one. Okay, um, one of the ones that I was considering though, you just took in the last round. Being okay. that I am having the fact that they are a father play into this because of the responsibility that it takes to man the fireworks. But I went with E Rob, not a Landon Roberts. E Rob for the fireworks <laughs> father of three but he himself on the football field is a firework i think that would translate well over to this nice balance between the responsibility it takes to man the firework while also keeping in mind yes i am a father of three i know how much power is in my hands i want to make it out of this alive i think that it's e-rob here that's a good pick that's a really good pick i like that and then i'm disappointed that i didn't get to pick him so <laughs> yes but yeah but that's uh, a good uh, that's a good choice so it goes back I to feel me like for, T, I feel like TJ is going to come up with some like like there's going to be choreography like I'm going to have music <laughs> I'm going to have music to mine like these are going to be imported German fireworks you know like I I just feel like you're going to get you're going to get the very best of the best here. Yeah, I, honestly, like I hope that I, like after we're done with this, I might have to send this to a play just get their perspective on what they would do with these categories. See just how wrong we are. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, someone to bring slash make the drinks. This is honestly the last one that I had somebody for. Like when I was going through here, it took me the longest to come up with this. But I ended up with going with Nick Herbig. And the reason being the Hawaiian influence, I think we can maybe get some tropical flavor within the drinks here that he brings slash makes. So I, I went with Nick. I didn't want to use Nate on this one because he might come up later. But yeah, Nick Herbig, just the heritage that he has, I just feel like. He might have bring some tropical infusion into the drinks that we got on the 4th of July. So I, I, I was thinking about this a lot and I can't think of like what it really depends on the kind of 4th of July party you want to have. Like if you want to have some tropical drinks, some things with some umbrellas in it, you know, mm -hmm. like so we're, 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 we're talking guava and passion fruit and like, yeah, I think, I think, I think Nick's a great choice. My 4th of July, my ideal so the way I thought about it is, what is my ideal 4th of July party beverage? What do I want to drink? And what I want to drink is a whole bunch of icy light mangoes in a kiddie pool full of ice. And the person that I believe is going to give me that is Christian Kuntz. Christian Kuntz is the bartender that I will. I would have Christian Kuntz bartend my wedding, okay? He is the bartender I want at my 4th of July party. You come up there asking for something with, with, with an umbrella in it, you're going to get that look and then the response and the yins are at, get that out of here. What do you need that for? Have an iron. 
Christian I'm Jones. I'm very upset. Like that's a good pick for this, but I'm more upset that I can't have him later on more than anything else. I, I that one hurts. That one hurts, but it's a great pick. I, I, I think that that was a slam dunk there. Alan, you got the first pick for the uh, who would bring their famous dish that they always make. Well, this is where I was. I was leaving a Herbig. I'm give me Nate Herbig. Okay. I do want. I do want some like you know yeah. that he's got some Hawaiian recipe. That he's like, oh yeah, I got. I'll, I'll make something good for you guys. Like, and it's you know, I, I think that's the one where it's like you don't want the whole. You don't need the whole food menu to be like Hawaiian, but like I'm sure he's got something up his sleeve that he could bring some pokey or something like that. Okay, this is one where this was the exact player in that exact spot that I had as my first guy in here. So that really stinks to lose Nate Herbig in that fashion. Literally sniped Ooh. on that one. I don't have any. Oh, I, I got to think on the fly now of, of who I would go with. You know who I'm going to go with? And this is because he spent so much time around them, was with one of them in college as well. That relationship has continued over. I'm going to go with Keanu Benton. I've seen his Instagram stories too. He, he's definitely in the food game. And with how much time he spent around the Herbigs in their kitchen, around their family, I think he's got something to offer as well. I'm concerned that Keanu Benton might just go fishing and not come to the party though. <laughs> <laughs> that that, like, that could have played, I, as a, played a fellow fisherman, well. as a fellow fisherman, I understand that. Like, oh, I'll just go in the morning. And then they're biting, and then it's like, oh, it's, it's one. Well, nobody really gets there at one. Oh, it's four. It's like, oh, well, you know, I'll, I'll just, just, just 10 more minutes. You know, one more cast. We'll see. I don't know. I don't know if he's going to make it to the party. Pat, Patrick Queen, you see how much he fishes. He would fall into that yeah, category, there you go. I think, as there well. There you go. Uh, man, okay. So someone you invite but won't come. I had a couple people that I could have said for this one. Honestly, I had three listed. None of them are off the board yet. So I'll go with my top one. Russell Wilson, he's going to be busy doing other things with Sierra and his family. He ain't coming to this cookout if I invite him. I think Russ was the obvious choice here. Like, that's that's a yeah. really good answer. Like, I think it just fits. Um, so I'm going to go – I'm going to cheat. I'm, I'm picking Mike Tomlin. I think Mike Tomlin is the <laughs> – like, you want to invite Mike Tomlin to the party. You don't want to not yeah. invite Mike Tomlin to the party, but you're sure he's not going to – even if he says he's coming, like, you're not expecting him to roll up. Right. Like that's, that's where I'm at. That's yeah. That's a great pick. The other is uh, like, I thought about Najee Harris could be in here as well. Somebody that I'll use on a later one. So I don't want to bring up their name yet. Um, but yeah, Mike Tomlin, obviously uh, someone that you only trust to bring napkins and ice. He got the first pick for this one. Uh, Connor Hayward. I just okay. feel like, like he has like extreme little brother energy, not just because his older brother is on the team. And I feel like that is like a little brother trait where it's like, no, nah, no, nah, just bring something that you can't screw up. I feel like that's, that's my pick there. Okay. I went with Pat for this one and I'm 100% going to tell him that I did. So a um, little bit of personal. Both, both tight ends. Very interesting. That mm. we, we, we have a lot of faith. <laughs> In the tight end room's ability to uh, to be responsible adults and contribute to the cookout, other than ice or napkins. I That's mean, our... I think if if he were on here, he himself would probably pick him for this. Like, this is, I'm not saying anything that he himself does not know. So, I feel good about that. Um, okay, so I got the first pick for someone that is still there when you wake up on the fifth. My, I had lost my previous pick for this. This is where I wanted Christian Coons. Because I just feel like he okay. is, he's a party guy. I feel like he's going to need to stay the night. He ain't going home on the fourth. He's You're waking up and he's still sleeping on a couch. Maybe he's actually like in a, in a lounge or something in the backyard. Didn't even make it into the house. Um, so just based off one experience that I've had with him, I'm going to go with Kyle Allen on this one. QB three in the room. Um I, I think he's a responsible guy, but I, I think that he knows how to, to get down to at a party. So I'm going to go with Kyle Allen for my pick for this. Uh, I'm, I'm going way off the board here, but interestingly, okay. we're going to the same position again. Um, oh. John Rice Plumley, like, I think, I think like, you, if you played football in the SEC, like, I, I think you've, you've had some, you've had some yeah. all night parties. Like, I just, I think, like you were the the starting quarterback 
at Ole Miss, like I, I can only mm-hmm. like vaguely imagine what that social life is like, right? Like, like yeah. of all the places, really, to be like you're the starting quarterback, and and you're gonna go have a good time. I think Ole Miss might be like darn near the top of like the level of of party that that you're regularly experiencing. Yeah. I'd agree. I like that. That is that is interesting though that we went with the other guys in the QB QB room. Also, I do also quarterbacks very responsible. Gonna stay mm-hmm. if they've had too many. So I, yeah. I think that fits also. Yeah. Um, all right, you got the first pick then for this next one. Someone that shows up fashionably late. I'm going Nazi Harris. I, I just think Nazi Harris. I was just like, say similar train of thought for me as like not showing up at all. Like what's it's one the California yeah. guy. He's just like a little bit too cool to be there early. Like he had something mm-hmm. else going on or like and the other thing too, is I feel like Najee Harris would deliver like the best reason for showing up. Oh man, I'm sorry that my beat poetry reading ran late or like, like I don't know. Like he's <laughs> going to come up with a, he's going to come up with a, not only is he going to show up late, but it's going to be like a great reason why he was late also. Like it's a twofer for me. Okay, we're treating this one like it's a position meeting and George Pickens is showing up late uh, to my cookout. So <laughs> that's where I'm going with that one. Uh, like, like I said, similar train of thought for me as to the person that wasn't showing up at all who's coming late in this scenario. Yeah. But I'm going yeah. with George. He, he'll find his way there. It's just not going to be on time. The other thing, and, and I think George is a good pick for this reason too, if you're late, you don't get the food. Like, you know the big guys aren't going to be late. Like, no offensive lineman is showing up late to a cookout, right? Like, they're all going to be there. Like, so it was going to be, hey, Cam, you said this was going to be ready at 6. <laughs> it's 6.12. What the heck? Like, you know, like, that's that's Very where true. the big guys are. They're in line for the food. Like, it's you've got to pick a skilled position guy or a smaller athlete to that's willing to be late because they know they're they're not going to get the they're not going to get the, the the pick of the the pick of the buffet. Yeah, uh, uh, that train of thought. Maybe it's Calvin Austin, a busy running around somewhere, just running forties. On a Calvin's field. like too polite, though. Like I, he's a very polite guy. Like I, I was just know, trying I, to think of the smallest was, guy. I, yeah, he is the smallest guy. Uh, <laughs> Matthew Wright. I don't. I don't uh, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there, there you go. yeah. Uh, all right, and finally, someone that dominates the yard game slash pong and flip cup. Um. Wait, do I have the first pick on? I have the first pick on this one. You had the first pick last year. Um, I'm going Chris Boswell on this one. Reason being, I just feel like he's really good at like weird stuff. Like, and not to say that that golf is weird, but I feel like it's got to be a specialist because everybody, not everybody on the team, but players that I've talked to on the team, everybody knows how good at golf Patrick Peterson was. That it's widely like he's a legit golfer, but everybody was like, besides him, <laughs> that's what the way it was always asked. Who's the best golfer on the team? And this is a question that was asked on uh, Cam Hayward's podcast, and the consensus was Chris Boswell. So I just think that that's going to transfer over to uh, the cornholes, the lawn darts, can jams of the world. So I'm going Chris Boswell here. I like the Boswell pick. I think that's a good place for a kicker. I probably would have gone with George Pickens here because I think most of those games are about eye-hand coordination, right? Isn't that like the most – the thing that like – you need to have yeah. the most for, for those things. So with mm-hmm. Pickens off the board, I'm just I'm just picking, I think, the best athlete. Give me Justin Fields. I think Justin Fields could like could could run some game on, on and he also uh you gotta have competitiveness too. Like Cam Hayward, very competitive. Uh yeah. he'd be he'd have been a good pick here too. But I, I think I'm going with Justin Fields just just because of the athlete. I think that's that's where I'm I'm, that's why I'm liking this 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 choice. Similarly, if, if Boswell was off the board here, the second guy that I thought about for the same reason that you're saying is Joey Porter. I just feel like yeah. the competitive nature comes into play here to a degree. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And, and good eye-hand coordination, too. Joey's a good pick here, too. I, yeah, that, that's true. All right. That was a lot of fun, and I'd be curious to know uh, what the people in the comments, if they were putting this together would have to say with their picks as well. Let us know how you feel uh, about each one, who you feel like between the two of us came out on the better of that. Uh, Alan, anything else to add? No, man, that was fun. Uh, I like doing these. It's something different. And uh, we'll get back to the normal 
routine on Friday. Until then, I hope everybody has a safe. Don't don't let don't don't <laughs> don't don't let like running backs run your fireworks. Like it's it's a bad idea. Wide receivers wide receivers cannot be trusted with fireworks. I guess just I, you know who's you another one that I was like maybe either the guy that should be at the top of this list or the absolute bottom of this list is Demonte Casey. No, KZ is the guy where, like, if it's just you and him, it's great. But, like, no, not for family, not for not for Mimo. No, it's not. It's not happening. <laughs> KZ's going to hurt someone, okay? I, I think it'd be fun, but he's going to hurt someone. Yeah, so you just got to accept that ahead of time. So, yeah, if you're planning it to be, like, a, a big cookout family and the team involved, yeah, he keep him away. Yeah. Maybe no, from the entire Absolutely. Thing. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, he, right. yeah. So good. we'll let see. Know, we'll uh, see. Who, let us know who you think did better, uh, yes. for sure, and uh, we'll keep this thing rolling. And let us know your picks. I want to know what everybody would have done in the in this scenario as well. Uh, I appreciate that Alan just came into it on the fly in general. I at least had a general idea of where I would like to go. I had to switch a couple of those on the fly, but overall, I got the the board that I wanted, the team that I wanted for this thing. So that was good. Uh, Alan, tell the people they can find you. At A Saunders underscore PGH, PGH Steelers now, SteelersNow.com. Like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Click that bell for notifications. We'll be back with more regular football talk on Friday. There we go. Uh, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. As Alan said, also leave us a five star review and subscribe if you're listening somewhere else Apple, Spotify, wherever your podcast from. You can find us there. Find us on TikTok as well. 90 second uh, clips from each of the shows, trying to upload there more regularly, as well as YouTube shorts, which you guys see showing up in your feed now as well. Uh, follow me everywhere, Zachary Smith PGH. Follow Alan, Brown Sonny's, and myself. Thanks for jumping in. Take another ride on the Steelers afternoon drive. Mm-hmm.